Hello there and welcome to my guide for the Rana faction in Songs of Conquest. In this video I'm going to talk about the wielders, their military roster, their spellcasting abilities and I'm doing my best to give you a full impression about your options and capabilities with this faction. We're gonna get started, like I said, with the heroes so let's do that right away. Your hero roster. We have one arcane caster, as it is one of the three colors that our uh, faction has. Nothing special about that. Guy has a pretty uh, nice bias towards, uh, towards offense and arcana spell casting. We got next up one dude that's specializing into your tier one mass light infantry. This guy can be pretty nasty, as the tier one hunters are utter crap. But the Storm Gods are pretty decent units. I'm going to cover that once we hit the military roster. But this guy is really amazing. Has amazing potential with that uh, specialization. So, next up we got our Destruction Magic uh, Specialist. It's nothing much to write home about. It's your baseline Destruction Magic Specialist if you want one. And here we have our Nuke Specialist, coming with Spell Damage Power and Creation Magic. This is one hell of a hero if you want to start nuking. And the Rana have the spell tools to do crazy heavy lifting with that. Really powerful wielder. If you want to steamroll against the AI, this is one, one uh, pick to uh, recommend. We got here a counter against spell damage. These guys are really, really valuable if you ever play against that. Comes also with a decent range of resistance on the same side. But offense-wise, yeah, well, quite the turtle, eh? Here we have a specialist for mounted units. The Ravagers and the Riders of the Swamp are our mounted specialists. And, well, good Blitz Tactics character also features a nice scouting quality with a high movement radius and view radius, but that's about it. We have a ranged defender on this end, very much also a defense-oriented uh, character, and yeah, coming with a melee resistance uh, skill on the same side, this is what you can go for if you want to have some really tough defensive troop lineup. Next up we have somebody for the blitzy tactics pure offense offense on all ends but uh, in all honesty this is a really really powerful pick if you're not going to go for the spell casting damage path this guy dishes out some real pain as well these percentile bonuses they go a long way and uh, you cannot achieve any other um, comparable damage output than with this guy here and obviously we also have a ranged specialist at the end of the line. I love these guys, especially as he's learning faster. Well, if you want a ranged setup, well, it doesn't get much better than that in my humble opinion. Now, next up we get towards our military roster. We run hunters as our baseline tier one units. They're the typical run of the mill light infantry Comes cheap, dies fast, has a decent minimal damage, but nothing much more except for the really high initiative to, uh, to, to talk about. But once we upgrade that to Storm Gods, these guys go bonkers. Their stats double on many ends and uh, uh, the defense goes six times as high even. So these guys turn from nothing into really sick shock troopers that can just ignore the enemy's zone of control. Since we have teleport abilities in Urspe in Urspellbook, these guys have a super easy time of getting into the EM in enemy backline with that. They can also be used to hunker down and defend frontline and uh, yes, <laughs> these are really stupidly good tier 1 uh, mass troops. Worth it to specialize a hero into it and have some fun with it. Next up we have the Shamans and the Sages, poison oriented spellcaster ranged fighters. They come with two points of essence, as you see there, it's just as these guys, and they poison the enemy. Poison is really good, I love that stuff. They're also fairly resilient, well, I mean, it is... 10 HP are better than many tier 1 units, and with the stack size of 30, they also pack quite a punch due to just their sheer numbers. They also have on their upgraded variant a upgrade for the people that they stand next to, and yeah, I mean, they, they come all with a high initiative, decent range, 
these guys are awesome. I really like them. They are just... Their only downside is that you often have to consider which one of these guys you take. Next up, Gods and Protectors. These are super slow, super tanky troops that come with a lot of good things except of their lack of mobility. Movement 2 makes them really stupidly slow. But on the other hand, you have a stack size of 30, a health of 30. Well, the damage is also decent enough for the resilience that they pack. Their biggest downsides are their low melee offense and their low movement. Due to their high initiative though, you can position them where they need to be and therefore it's pretty nice. They also boost the defense of their neighbors, which is, yeah, these guys are really good to defend your, your backline. They're really excelling at that. Transforming them into protectors gives them the obvious buffs all over the board, but I must say, from health 30 to health 50 on a 30 troop size... Wow, <laughs> it's just wow. These guys are so annoyingly hot to kill. And they gain the bull rush skill, which negates their movement issue. So from that point on, you can also use them as a offensive tool, but uh, mind you that you keep your back line open. But yeah. Uh, this is amazing. This upgrade is uh, makes them very versatile and even better at the job that you originally hired them for. Their major downside is also they don't generate much essence, but beyond that, awesome stuff. Ravagers are your cavalry. They're pretty light troops. They gain the they have the charger trait, which means they hit super hard the further they are allowed to run. They don't have the highest initiative of all runner troops, but that doesn't matter that much as their upgrade, which I'll be talking later about, negates that issue totally. They have a decent HP, they have decent offense and defense skills, and they even come in a troop size stack of 15. Pretty good troop all together, I really like them. Their damage could be just higher, as once they don't have their momentum anymore, like the charging attack, their standard attack is a little bit low-ish. The upgraded version of theirs receives the ability to wait, which is pretty nasty. It also counteracts their lowish initiative, so you can totally uh, position yourself really good. They don't gain as many stats on other ends, but it is a decent power up on all ends. That wait ability is something really, really sick. They also generate a really fair amount of essence on all ends. Crawlers and borrowers are kind of your your shock troopers. They are also, again, really hot to kill. I mean, seriously, these stats here, combined with the troop size, are amazing. And uh, they they also come with a debuff on the enemy that they're standing next to, and they also have damage resistance against spells. This even gets enhanced and they turn into burrows as they, yeah, you can let them teleport over the battlefield, which is crazy, because that means you can just let them disappear for a turn and let them reappear somewhere. You can do some crazy stunts with that, combined with those really good stats and their resilience against spell damage makes them really, really powerful shock troops. So it's really hard to decide, but I'd even say the Burrows are much stronger than the Ravagers in most scenarios. But here again, very low essence generation to give you something to compare these guys again. Even their upgraded ones only generate one piece of essence. Next down the list, we got the Trammers. So Trammers are, well, even harder shock troopers than the Burrowers and the Ravagers. So here you have your musical unit. They also give you the ability to debuff the enemy. Unlike most musical units in the, fa in the other factions, they don't buff your own troops, which is its own downside. But yeah, it is, uh, especially the initiative reduction there is quite nasty. So they don't have a tier 2 pendant, but uh, they pretty much come as a tier 2 troop already. There's three colors of mana. Their versatility in many, many different fields makes these guys really, really a, a good unit on, on all ends when you can get them. The Chilun are just basically your guards and protectors on steroids. They have massive defensive abilities, 
they're super slow they got super low initiative though compared to the guides this is a real downside but on the other hand what they don't have on that end they have on they have in terms of destructive power their damage is really high they have a lot of health a lot of defensive stats and they are also really powerful against ranged units their tier 2 ability is just the more of the same things that we've already seen before the interesting part is that they generate even more essence once they are upgraded so they are really excellent at just standing there defending your backline and generating essence turn by turn and churning out more spells this is a really nasty unit to have because it's darned hard to get past them and they are also pretty good at what they do you can either use them as mana generators as a very slow forward moving juggernaut like wall i mean we have also teleport ability so it is not that impossible to move them into the front line even where they can be absolute centers of the fight where they can just tank a lot of stuff these guys are really powerful on their own rights next up estra and after that the dragons so Ethra are your top tier ranged units what can i say they are just what they are but they are weakish top tier ranged units other cultures have more on that end but that doesn't mean that the Ethra are anything bad anything but good they are just more average than other high tier um, ranged troops. So, for example, the uh, Fey Nobles. If we check, if we compare that to a Fey Queen that has a multi-target attack and all that, yeah, this is just not the same. They are basically, nevertheless, very very useful and powerful troops to be accompanied with your sages. They result in a pretty decent uh, ranged backline, but. All in all, this is not Rana's main focus and uh, direction. You gain also dragons. What can I say, dragons? Well, dragons are the kings of the battlefield. They come with a super, super low troop size stack, uh, or stack size. They come with extremely high costs, and they are really, really annoyingly strong. They have an innate AoE. They can lower the enemy's mobility, as an active skill so you can use them really good as a pin down unit they are stupidly fast stupidly early in the turn yeah what's better than an, a dragon an elder dragon of course which is just way more of the same yeah dragons what can i say dragons are just amazing and they make up for the lack of strong ranged available uh, abilities that you got there but uh I want to say that Sages and Ezra make a real nice backline of ranged attackers, especially the damage over time effect on the poison makes it a really nice afterburn, so don't underestimate these guys. Not at all. So, magic-wise, we have access to Creation, Destruction, and Arcana magic, so I want to cover these real quick. Aggression is just a wonderful spell that complements our aggressive blitz tactics playstyle. what can i say nothing enough said sabotage goes into the exactly different venue where you can lower the enemy troops resilience and this spell is crazy strong as it is battlefield wide wide on all enemy troops making nukes hit harder and hit your troops hard and uh, make your troops hit harder this is a really bad news for the enemy ice bolt is a excellent tool to decrease the enemy's mobility while hurting them. They're the mainstay of the spell is though the uh, disruption of the enemy's mobility. And Fireball, your go-to AoE nuke. Don't need to say more about that, don't I, do I? We got on the next end in the creation sector, Insect Swarm for more disruption power. It's a lingering initiative debuff. This damage is really, really uh, low, but the initiative debuff hits hard earth block allows you to block certain areas of the battlefield can be at times stupidly powerful as you can block off entire ranks of melee units while pelting them with ranged attacks so i personally see this as one hell of a spell for ranged rosters mist makes certain troops unattackable it is crazy for a 
belt that goes so in your face, this is an excellent compliment as it makes your relatively vulnerable blitzers, like your ravagers, invulnerable for a turn or so. Acid Cloud is a lingering AoE nuke, and as you see there, the Rana faction is really powerful when it comes down to nuking stuff. We also have Arcana spells available, Psychic Spear, Baseline, cheap single target nuke. It's one of the most unimpressive spells in the entire game. Dimensional Door, on the other hand, is amazing, as it allows you to move your troops all over the battlefield in a crazy way, and yeah, you know... This makes your relatively immobile units terrifyingly mobile all of a sudden if you spend your arcana mana into that. Repel is the exact other way around, so this is what you can use to either keep ranged attackers away from your troops for another turn, so you push them back so that they get to shoot, or get stuff out of your backline. It's a terror terribly versatile spell i love it and last but not least we have arcane storm well what can i say it is like a fireball just wider and less damage per time we have so many nuking abilities on the rana it is beyond stupid diet wise we have explosive fungi which is basically the explosive version of earth black enough said it's a wonderful spell i love it we got destroy essence because we also get to destroy the enemy's mana generation, so you have a lot of control on that end. Ethereal Scales makes your troops go much tankier. Very, very, very powerful stuff. Because we have a few very vulnerable hard-hitting uh, units in our roster, this is an amazing way of, uh, of counteracting on that. Entangle is just a stopper for a very dangerous troop on the enemy side love that one if, if, if there's some troop stack that really makes you some hard it would give you some hard time if it'd be in your ranks entangle down deal with it later when you're done with the rest of the army good stuff then we got rupture which is just psychic or how is it called the uh psychic spear on crack it's basically the same just stronger and last but not least Breath of the Phoenix, because, you know, we already have one Hex Splash AoE, two Hex Splash AoE, heck, we need that line shot too. And that's what it is. It's just a line shot of direct damage, which can be devastating at times, and often it is just not really attractive, but, you know, when you're playing Rana, you have a full scale of destructive magic at your disposal. All right, so economy-wise, you will need some Glimmer Weave for your Chilun troops and Amber. Amber, Amber, Amber for your dragons. Because that's the big downside here. The dragons are really, 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 really costly dudes. We not only need the Amber for the hiring of theirs, the, tr the buildings themselves are stupidly costly. So that is really... Amber is the resource you want to stockpile heavily upon. All the other resources, of course, have their own value, but I just want to point out that Glimmer Weave and Amber are the two resources that you want to keep an eye out for, because the Chelun are really, really strong, tanky units that, you know, due to the teleportation spells that we got, their immobility is not really a big deal at all. And Amber, well, you want dragons, and who does not want dragons, you need to keep an eye out for that as well. All right, not much more to say about that. Your strategic options with the, with the Rana are pretty clear. You can go for a very straight up in your face playstyle with all the fast hard hitters that we got going into their face with dragons, burrowers, and uh, the light infantry that you got, all those things, that works out a charm. Pair that with destructive magic and you have an easy time just nuking away what you want. The other playstyle that I see pretty, uh, pretty viable here is relying more on your shamans and ethdra and combine that with your super tanky um, guards and chelun and you have one of a bastion that can just hunker down, pelt the enemy with spells like crazy, and just shoot whatever comes close enough 
to to be of any danger. So these are the two baseline strategies that I can nail down. Rana is a lot about spell casting, in my humble opinion. Their spell casting options are so good that you should totally go for that. So I hope that was a helpful guide for you. Let me know what you think. I missed a spot. Add in more into the comment section. Leave a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Check out the description box. I got an entire playlist full of Songs of Conquest tutorials there. And I also got a Discord, a Twitch channel. And if you happen to be willing to support my work financially, I'd be a very, very grateful man. And of course, I want to say a big thanks to all of the supporters of Icon Gaming. And a big thanks to you for watching this video until the very end. See you all next time.